Don't miss out on our new videos by subscribing Logic Heap and pressing the bell icon. Hello friends, welcome to Logic Heap. In this tutorial, we are going to see what are processor operations, why we are talking in fact about processor operations. Let's see. So you have a problem statement given to you. It says you have a sorted list of numbers. It means numbers are already arranged in some order, in ascending order. Smallest number being kept at first and the larger number next. So that's how we have arranged those numbers, those are sorted and then you have given a value 10, you need to search in this list if this number is present or not. So simply it's a search of on a list of numbers. Now for doing this, suppose you and your friend are working on it, you both think of why not just solve this problem, let's write it, let's go by ourselves. So there are two elbows, one your friend have written and one you have written. Let's say L1 and L2. Now, your friend is running on system 1 and you are running on system 2. So, both the systems are different. Let's say time taken to solve this algorithm you have calculated. Okay, when it is running, you have calculated the runtime of this program. Let's call it T. Okay, and in algo 2, it's T. So, what you will say if T1 is less than T2, means L1 is taking less time than Algo 2, in that case, Algo 1 is better because it is taking less run time, right? So you will say Algo 1 is better. But you have not checked System 1 and System 2's configuration. Maybe System 1's configuration is that good that it has made actually an algorithm to run fast. And maybe System 2 is an old generation computer, that's why the results are not that fast, okay? So you cannot compare two algorithms on the basis of running time because each system uh, is different, its configurations are different. So we cannot compare on the basis on the basis of running time. Now, if we cannot compare it on the basis of running time, what would be the other parameters on which we can compare? So what would be the other approaches to compare algorithms? Next thing that comes is we will see the processor operations for both the algos and whichever has less processor operations it means that algo is going to run faster that would be the other approach so instead of running time let's shift our focus to processor operations okay now we are thinking to, cal to compare to algos on the basis of processor operation now how to calculate total number of operations of your code how will you calculate it Total processor operations, if I ask, it is sum of indivisible operations in your code. Okay, you sum all of them, all of the indivisible operations that are written, that are there in your code, and you sum all of these, and that's how you get processor operations for your code. Now, what are indivisible operations? Those cannot be further divided. Like that's a single unit of operation that a processor will process. So, like what operations we consider as indivisible operations? Assignment. Okay. Assignment operations. So that we consider that it gets done in indivisible, it, it gets done as an indivisible operation. Then your arithmetic operation, they also take one indivisible operation. From now on, one indivisible operation, I am calling it one operation, okay? Then your comparison, comparison operations, I call it as one indivisible operation. Then suppose you write return statement, it is also going to take one operation. Now, one thing I want to make clear, maybe in some system, this particular thing is taking more operations for doing this indivisible operation, it is taking more cycles, but I will not say that it is taking three operations in this case, doing arithmetic is taking three steps in this case, I am standardizing this thing here that it is going to take one processor operation, whatever the system is. These are the indivisible operation and those are going to take one operation, one processor operation. That is the standard. Okay, that's how you calculate processor operation. Those are independent of the system. These things, assignment, arithmetic comparison, arithmetic operations comparison, those are going to take 
one processor operation. Now, this is here what are one indivisible operations that, that is taken by the processor once. Now you understood this. Let's take some examples so that if I give you code, you will be able to see what number of processor operations it took. And that's how we'll compare values. Let's see. First example I'm going to take. So in my fun one, let's say this is the name of my function, and I'm passing it a variable. And I'm passing it x. What it is going to do? It is going to do addition of 1 in it. Then uh, I'm going to return x multiplied by 5. Let's say this is my goal. Okay? Find out the number of processor operations that it is going to take. Firstly, these are the two lines. This statement, here we have two operations. First is addition. So we know it's an arithmetic operation, it is going to take one operation. So x plus 1, one operation plus assignment operation is the second indivisible operation. It is going to take one operation, so 1 plus 1, 2. And then this statement here, what it is going to do? x multiplied by 5. So there is multiplication operation plus 1 and then you are returning. So it is again going to take one operation, so plus 1. So what are the number of processor operations here? Total 4 processor operations. Clear? That's how you can calculate processor operations. You have considered all these indivisible operations as taking one processor operation. Okay, let's take another example. Example 2. Let's consider some loop statements here. In my Fun two in uh, n. What I'm going to do here? In sum assign zero for in i assign zero. Let's say I assign one. It will give some of n natural numbers like plus plus and sum assigns sum plus i. And after that, we will return sum. Okay? Tell me the number of processor operations it is going to take. So, this is the first statement. Assignment, one operation. Here, C. Int i assigns 1. First assignment. Let's consider n equals to 1 for the sake of easiness. Let's consider n equals to 1 for now. Now, this statement is going to take one operation. Now, i less than equals to n. So, 1 less than equals to 1. This comparison is done here. And it is going to take one operation. Once this is done, we we'll enter in the loop. Sum assign sum plus i. So, 0 plus 1 plus addition. So, another plus 1. And then this assignment. So, another plus 1. Okay. Now, once this is done, sum is now 1. And we will come here. We will increment i. So, this Again is one operation, increment. After that, i is 2. So 2 is less than equals to 1. This comparison is going to take one operation and then you are out of this loop because this condition is false. Now you will return sum. So this is going to be plus 1. Now these are the number of operations it took in case of n equals to 1. What is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 processor operations. So now we know how to calculate processor operations. Okay, which was the goal of this tutorial. You should know how many processor operations it is going to take. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much guys for tuning into Logic Heap. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.